Thanks for checking out Chamber Web TV. This is Cambridge Votes 2014. We're having conversations with the candidates for the upcoming municipal election on October 27th. I'm Brian Butcher. I'm vice president here at the Chamber. And, and right now it's my great pleasure to sit down with candidate for regional chair, Robert Milligan. Robert, thank you for being here. Pleasure to meet you, Brian. Appreciate your time. an opportunity to communicate with the Cambridge business community. Uh, so you've you've done this before. You're out there campaigning, yes. talking to people. Are yes. you having a good time? Pretty good time. Uh, I like discussing ideas with people about how the region can be improved in every way, including business. Good. Well, that's good to hear. Um, let's start off with the uh, probably the hardest question of all, Robert. Why are you running? Well, I'm running for uh, uh, a, a number of reasons. Um, I'm the uh, only person who thinks outside the box to generate new ideas for the region that will serve business generally well. Uh, I want to make all of Waterloo regions uh, strong economically and not favor any uh, particular area. I feel Cambridge has not been treated fairly, including uh, directly and indirectly, perhaps more indirectly, Cambridge business. Uh, I have a strong background in business, having worked for two multinational manufacturing firms as a business systems uh, analyst. I'm the only candidate who has taken courses in industrial engineering, actually from Conestoga College, and I think about big questions such as how can capitalism better serve business, society, and the environment. Okay, it sounds like you're, uh, you've got the answer to that question down. Um, so, over the last few weeks the region has been in the news, the regional debt has been in the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, apparently, it's uh, more than doubled in the last few years, and that doesn't even include the debt um, related to LRT and the coming debt with that. Uh, I'd like to know what your position is on the region's debt level. Well, um, according to uh, various firms that are out there that evaluate debt, we're in a, in a pretty good position. But um, at the same time, there are many uh, businesses uh, in the region, in Cambridge, and even individuals, many of whom work for businesses, uh, are used to. And uh, they're in a fairly bad situation. Mm -hmm. So I feel that what we have to do is try to generally uh, give more bang for, for the buck. Uh, and that means, among other things, um, we are more particularly, we have to uh, uh, lower taxes and we have to at the same time improve services. Now this can be done, and I've done it in regards to the LRT in terms of what I'm proposing. It is possible to do things for a lower cost and also do it a heck of a lot better. Uh, you have to be open to innovative ideas and uh, I feel that neither staff nor councillors are up to the task sufficiently to, to deal with this question, even though we have a very good innovative reputation. So um, I would like to see new ideas brought in in which um, the public uh, sits on what I would uh, call innovative advisory committees for each department of, of the region uh, that would partially independently, but at the same time collaborate with regional councillors and staff to generate new ideas that will improve our services and reduce our taxes. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. So every department would have its own committee of citizens that would just be there to really look at things they're doing, brainstorm ways of doing it better? I wouldn't say just citizens, but these would be people from the business community, some, some retired, people from the university, and uh, uh, proven to be uh, thoughtful and productive mm -hmm. citizens in regards to uh, what that particular department is concerned about. Okay, well, Robert, I want to talk about uh, economic development. You know there's a move afoot to have a, a regional economic development department that would um, primarily oversee foreign direct investment, um, bringing other businesses into the region. Uh, this, uh, the cities would have still their own economic development department that would look after more internal growth of, of existing businesses. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's probably comes about this move comes about probably because we lost uh, the opportunity with Dr. Edgar with their big plant and with uh, Maple Leaf going to uh, Maple Leaf Foods going to London. Hamilton. Uh, yeah, Dr. Edgar went to London. Um, but Cambridge is very much industrial based, and and with uh, with the particularly with the LRT, the regional thinking is is kind of more directed towards tech and services that would uh, build along the LRT line, which isn't appropriate for plants and so on. So we have some concern about whether there will be enough uh, motivation to bring industrial to the region. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on a regional organization for economic development versus the cities looking after it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I, I'm, I'm someone who's all for collaboration and, and um, not just one group almost exclusively uh, being responsible. So I would like to see a distributed group that has to do with economic development so that there's a big overlap between what the region would do and what the city uh, groups would do. So, uh, and that way you get more brain power brought to bear and it is someone and you don't have people just trying to defend their territory and you get too many mm -hmm. squabbles and so on. But to bring, so, so, so that would help to, to attract uh, business if you had a, a better organization, a distributed collaborative organization that can more intelligently reach out there and, 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 and deal with this, uh, this, this, this type of, of, of problem. But one of the ideas I suggested actually in one of my many presentations about light rail uh, transit and particularly involving Cambridge uh, I, I suggested uh, an advanced manufacturing hub for, for Cambridge in, uh, in collaboration with, with both the University of, 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 uh, of Waterloo and Conestoga uh, College. Um, th this, uh, like, I mean, I think that the region gets too many ideas and I maybe overwhelm them a bit, but even Doug Craig didn't pick up on this. But somebody who's picked up, up on this is a candidate for Kitchener Mayor, and he, whether he heard about it through, um, thought about it just himself, or heard about it through Carl's Air, I, I don't know. But I, I think uh, maybe Cambridge could have one also, or could put forth a proposal to, you know, the province and the feds that's superior to that of Cambridge's, and, and uh, you know, get funding for an advanced manufacturing uh, hub. And uh, I think involving, uh, you know, graduate students and, and st students generally in, in that process uh, would, 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 would be valuable because young people today want to get involved earlier mm -hmm. in, in projects. You see that happening with, 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 with uh, the electronics, high tech uh, sector. It needs to happen in manufacturing. Now, what, what also is complicating things here is the development of, of, uh, of, of 3D printing, that, that type yeah. of thing. And that is uh, cutting down the need for, for a lot of ma big manufacturing plants. And uh, yet, at the same time, maybe those can be used in big manufacturing plants in certain u unique ways. Maybe certain parts that they had to go outside the company for could, could be done by 3D and then assembled into the plant. All sorts of possibilities here to be explored. Unfortunately, the other candidates aren't into these types of things. I am, and I would, as regional chair, I would be a catalyst at least with manufacturing firms. I go around and I speak to them throughout the region and say, here's some new ideas. You need to get on board early. To, 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 to see if, if these ideas could be made part of, of, of your, your operation and that's better compete in the world. Yeah, it's hard to imagine where that kind of technology is going to go in a very, very short number of years. It already is, is changing things dramatically and, and there's no question that advanced manufacturing, the growth of advanced manufacturing for Cambridge is, is going to be critically important in the future as well. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We touched on LRT just for a second there, but uh, I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, you probably know the Cambridge Chamber was opposed to the LRT um, mm -hmm. a, as it was proposed mm -hmm. and as it's being implemented, uh, particularly because we didn't like the idea of Cambridge not having LRT but getting the, the, the wonderful opportunity to pay for it. Mm -hmm. However, that's that's been done. Uh, LRT is, is certainly on its way. Um, we're just wondering, you know, if there, if there are um, any thoughts on how we can improve it. Um, 
how do we move forward with LRT in the best interests of the community and of course from our point of view as the Cambridge community? Well, actually, I'm the person in the community who by far has spent time spread over eight years and thousands of hours uh, looking at the LRT, meeting with regional staff, and uh, meeting with politicians. I've had 18 meetings with Ken Seeley and so on about this. I've done field work. I've researched articles, etc. Uh, I've looked at their exemplar that they put forth, the Portland LRT system. If they borrowed ideas from the Portland LRT system, in which they, in a balanced way, stress both intensification and commuting, then we'd have a system that more people would, would be content with. They'd realize, in, in order for the commuting part to work well, it had to include Cambridge from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, one of their problems is when they go along a rail corridor, they would, it would cost just as much as to go along a street. If you look at the uh, Ottawa uh, O train, they, they, they're able to, to, to lay track for a much, much lower price along an existing uh, rail corridor. We, we, we could take, take the lead from them in terms of how to reduce construction costs. We could even take the lead in terms of, of, of having a single track system with passing tracks. They, their, their single track system has worked very well. They, they, they are uh, developing it now so, so that uh, they're going to extend it and also ha ha have, have, have the uh, amount of time uh, that it takes, uh, uh, in, in the speed at which it travels at in effect. Uh, lower considerably, so they'd be able with a single track to attain the same frequency that, uh, that we are able to, to, to achieve here at a much lower cost. So what I'm saying specifically, and Doug Craig was into this aspect as far as Cambridge is concerned, he said, why not use the existing rail corridor? Yeah. Okay. And it's not a matter of either or, it's a matter of both and. So I'm saying yes, use it from Northfield Drive down to the Ainsley Terminal. We, that will attract many more people to, uh, from their cars to use the system, increase the revenues, and, and hence lower the operating costs, and hence the amount we have to subsidize uh, uh, the system. So, so at the same time, I mean, if you just look at, at what they're proposing for Cambridge, I mean, you have to be careful what you ask for. You say we want the LRT here. Well, their version of the LRT would be too circuitous too, 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 too slow, slower than, than the current I-Express. Uh, while we want elements of that, we don't initially need all of it, okay? So what we could do, we'd have the, the uh, LRT commuter corridor as a backbone for the system, and in Cambridge, you, you'd have it go from the, the Delta area, uh, you know, a spur that goes on both sides of the road, that's a feature they have in, in Portland, which works very well, and right up to, to, to the mall that's uh, close to, to, to the 401 yeah. and, then, and then back again. That's all Cambridge needs. In fact, Doug Craig told me if it just went to the Cambridge mall initially, he, he would be satisfied with that. Okay? So we could have that. It, it could be part of the existing plan now. And that's why I'm suggesting, say, a six-month pause to explore the possibilities I'm putting forth, which is extremely cost-effective, much more sustainable, better address climate change. Okay. And, and, and in, in which our, our uh, Grand Link partners, would, 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 uh, if, if they implemented those ideas, would have a world exemplar that, that, that they could showcase, because they want to showcase the LRT system they're involved with. They're not going to really want to showcase this system, because <laughs> it's just not going to do very well. And, and taxpayers' money is going to be wasted. Well, uh, it, it will serve a small group, but not most taxpayers further out from the line in Kitchener, Waterloo, and, uh, and Cambridge. So I don't know why, you know, staff can't see it, why the councillors can't see it. Someone has mesmerized them that this is an ideal system. It's far from that. Well, okay, well, and, and, and along the line, same lines, talking about rail, uh, GO Transit, of course, Kitchener has GO Transit uh, once a day to Toronto and, and back. Um, and have had for so, some time now. The, the province has promised now they're going to have two-way all-day go. But you know, the, Cambridge has been looking for go for a long time, 
And the, the route from Cambridge is a shorter route, much shorter commute, less expensive to build up, and would could service the entire region, of course, but certainly is important to Cambridge, and Cambridge has been fighting that battle for a long time. I'm wondering, as regional chair, what would you do to advance, if in fact you would, advance the, the concept of go from Cambridge? Well, I've been involved in this question for quite a long time uh, with a friend who's retired from CP who's uh, been done more of the thinking here, but uh, he and I have developed some thoughts uh, uh, together. And what we're saying is initially uh, we could uh, begin with uh, selecting one of the GO trains that stops at Milton to, to actually start in, in, in Cambridge. And this could be done with the existing track uh, capacity. The agreement with CP would be such, uh, if this succeeds, then we will want to do that with, with more of the trains that stop uh, in Milton. Uh, and we would participate them in doubling the track because they want it doubled even for their, for their own purposes. Uh, to, to, to have one train uh, begin in, in uh, Cambridge isn't going to cost very much at all to, right. to do much less uh, expensive and also if you have a fast uh, LRT that comes from KW down to Cambridge those people who work along the southern line the southern CP line in Mississauga wherever uh, they would want to take it because the, the the northern go train wouldn't come close to where they work so it would attract additional people that that way too and make it a, a greater <laughs> Yeah, it seems to me that the, to draw people from KW down to the Cambridge GO station makes much more, for a shorter commute makes much more sense than expecting people from Cambridge to go half an hour, 25 minutes or half an hour to the Kitchener GO station to take a longer route than to Toronto. It just seems like the funnel should come through here logically, not just because I love Cambridge. Yeah. The key, key to that is having an LRT that can get down here Pretty quickly. Well, that would certainly feed yeah. it. Uh, yeah. no, and, no question. And, and their approach to the LRT would not get it here very quickly. Okay. More about transportation, Robert. Uh, the airport. Uh, you know, we have a, a diamond in the rough there with the Waterloo Region uh, International Airport. Uh, there were some uh, several expansion proposals, possibilities. Um, unfortunately, Bearskin Airline, which had full flights to Ottawa most days. Uh, lost their right to, to land in Ottawa, so we lost that service. And I think probably that's kind of what put the brakes on. Regional Council made the decision to put on hold any expansion plans, which we feel was kind of a lack of leadership there. Um, one of the, the proposal number three, one of the proposals uh, was seemed to be heavily favored by the public, had a lot of private investment involved in it and so on, had um, some of the noise concerns addressed and so on. However, it's all on hold at the moment. Uh, we're wondering what is your feeling about expanding or not our, our international airport? Well, um, certainly our international airport is, uh, is, is very important to, uh, to business, to be able to conveniently get out to the world. I mean, so it costs a little more, no, 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 no big deal to take it out of our airport here. But the main thing is convenience, saving time for, for the business community. So it is important to, to, to have an airport uh, here that operates well, that attracts airlines, and that means the, the airport itself has to be uh, done in such a way that it's not problematic to, to the airlines. In fact, it even has some pluses that maybe mm -hmm. competing airports uh, uh, don't, don't have. So I'm all for optimizing the, uh, the airport, uh, but we have to do more to, to work with those airlines. So, and if they have problems, do, do more to, to help them solve the problem. So I, I would have uh, looked, gone to, to, uh, to Ottawa, uh, gone, looked into why they, they were denied access to the Ottawa airport, which was the case, and tried to come up with some outside-the-box solutions to, to, to uh, help them regain that access, and then they would, they would, they would be uh, you know, still here, if that was the case. So um, I'm at the same time very concerned with, with noise. Uh, I mean, quality of sleep is extremely important. I hear some planes go by my house uh, late at night. I was not terribly loud. They're going to the Hamilton Airport, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm told. But when they're much closer to, to, to the ground, now I'm not sure if they come in late at night, but even still, 
the idea of an airplane flying overhead when increasingly less money is put into airline maintenance and so on, uh, <laughs> it, it can be somewhat worrisome because the people that are close to the flight path are more likely to suffer a uh, crash. Uh, odds against it, but I think at the same time it's a, it's a bit worrying for people and that's partly the basis of why they, they don't want the flight path over where they live. Yeah. You know. But uh, an airport is extremely uh, important and I would do all I can to, to advance it in appropriate ways and go much beyond what the current chair, and although he's done a good job in many ways, has done. I just feel that I I'm, can conceive of new ways that I could do to, to advance any particular uh, project uh, or, or, or service that the, uh, that the region is, is responsible for. Well, certainly new ways is what we always have to be looking for, how, how to improve things exactly. in all areas. And so finally, Robert, I want to ask you, you're running for regional chair. Mm -hmm. What does your region of Waterloo look like in 25 years? Well, um, I'm someone who, who has always spent time looking into, into the future. I've been a member of the World Future uh, Society. Um, my, my, my take to the future is to see where things seem to be going and then looking at the problems that, that, that would result and then trying to see how we could shift the direction we're going so those problems are, are, are at least minimized. So I would like to see uh, Waterloo Region take the lead in innovative things that could be done at a municipal level that could be an exemplar for, for the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to show the world how they could better do transit. We need to show them how they can better do an airport. We need to show them how we, how we can eliminate landfill sites and, and, and take the material to produce uh, electricity uh, and or hydrogen and, and thereby get rid of the problem of 25% of, of the, the methane, uh, you know, uh, the gas that goes in the atmosphere, they only capture about 75% at most. So sum that 25% across the world's landfill sites and you've got a, a big, a big a contribution. Uh, I would like to see the, the sewage treatment plants upgraded uh, so, so that various uh, uh, to toxic chemicals, particularly endocrine disruptors, aren't going into the, to our, our river, uh, which then goes into inadequate treating water treatment systems uh, down, down, downstream, and doesn't go into onto our farmland when the, the solid waste from the site are spread on farmland and gets into our food and also back into the water courses again. Uh, it's an I, endless circle, isn't it? Yes, and, and uh, water treatment has to be uh, improved greatly. We can't have endocrine disruptors getting through the water treatment systems. I've done work for the region in a number of areas. The Mannheim water treatment plant uses. Uh, activated carbon and ozone because I brought it to attention and convinced them that it was a, a good idea. I've done a lot of things like that which the record and the, and the media just doesn't notice. I operate behind the scenes quietly and I get these things done. I, I come across, I think a new idea myself, or I come across one and, and then I, I try to, to, to sell it and quite often I'm successful. I haven't been sufficiently successful with the LRT but uh, maybe in the future that hopefully it might change for the sake of our, of our regional image. Well, if you're successful in this election, you'll have the opportunity to bring all your ideas That's loudly, what I'm looking, loudly to the forefront. Looking forward to, and the uh, yeah, regional chair would, uh, would, would put me in a better position, yes, to, uh, to have those ideas considered and possibly implemented. I appreciate that. I just want to remind everybody to please uh, remember to vote on October 27th. Here in Cambridge, you have the opportunity to do so by phone or online between October 11th and 25th for the first time ever. And, and you can, I, or you can go on the 27th to the polling station, cast your ballot in the normal traditional manner. One way or another, it's very important that you vote, make your choice known. And Robert, thank you very much for being here today. I appreciate hearing your thoughts and best of luck in the campaign. Thank you very much, Brian.